Hello everyone, this is Lomi, and I'm back this week to share a glimpse at how I made a wig for Vaughn, my SID Claude. I'll jump right into the wig making here, using wefts made of Surrey alpaca fiber and white glue, attaching them to a wig cap made with two layers of pantyhose and more white glue. If you're not familiar with this process, there's more about both the wig cap making and the weft making in my other wig videos. You can see these locks are pretty long. I'm going to cut them as I go, creating layers that are just a little longer than I want each layer to be in the end. I'll blend these layers together by softening the ends with little vertical cuts like these. But as you can see, this is going to be both messy and time consuming, so I'm going to do all my blending at one time, after the wig is all put together. I've made short wigs before, not with alpaca fiber, but I figure the principles will be the same. Vaughn has been through a lot of wigs, both faux fur fabric and synthetic fiber, some of which were really expensive. Every wig had a different problem, either not fitting well or not laying well, and hopefully making my own wig out of Surrey alpaca will help. I want this wig to lay pretty flat, so I spaced the wefts apart a good bit. You don't have to use wefts when making wigs. You have the option of gluing the fibers straight to the wig cap, and I'll use that method to fill in some spaces later on, but I usually like starting with wefts first just because they're more forgiving of mistakes. I also usually sit my dolls upright for wig making. He's sitting on my lap this time, leaning over the desk, but he keeps trying to slide off into my lap. Come on buddy, hang in there. Once I reach this point, I can tell I won't be able to manage with him on my lap, so now he's sitting upright on my desk and facing me. I continue to layer wefts across the top of his head, and I also start placing wefts along the front hairline. You can see these lay in the opposite direction of the rest of the wefts, and I also glue them on so the rows overlap just a little. That's so when I fold his hair back to style it, the wefts and front edge of the wig cap won't really be visible. You can also see here where I glue some loose fiber directly to the wig cap. This isn't difficult, but it is messier, and much less precise than using the wefts. I'll keep gluing wefts until the whole wig cap is covered, with the front part layered to provide more coverage. I'll keep gluing wefts until the whole wig cap is covered, with the front part layered to provide more coverage. I want to keep some longer pieces around his face, so I separate some out with a comb and trim the rest for styling back over the top of his head. When I get to the front edge, I see some places where the hair didn't glue to the edge well, so I use a paintbrush to put a little more glue in that spot. I press the hair into the glue and let it dry completely before moving on to styling. The first step of styling is blending the edges of the layers so they aren't quite so choppy, though I do want them to stay a little spiky. But as you can see, it's hard to trim the edges of the layers while the wig is on the doll. I need it to retain its shape while I work, so the best thing to do here is take the doll's head off its body. That way I can turn the head freely in hand while I trim each layer, getting to all those difficult angles. So here we go, his head is off and I removed his eyes just to make sure I wouldn't mess them up while rolling him around in my hands. I'll use a pencil to separate each layer of wefts and trim them one at a time. I use regular human hair scissors, 
And for places that need more thorough blending, I use blending shears. All these tiny snips are going to take forever. If you're impatient, it may be better to break it up into several sittings. This video is sped up so it's 10 times faster than the original footage, with large portions cropped out, so you won't have to watch every single cut. It took me around an hour and a half for this blending. I work my way up from the bottom, using my fingers to hold each layer separate from the others. You can see what a difference the blending makes. Anytime I encounter sections of hair that don't want to lay nicely after being trimmed, I dip my fingers in water and run them over the strands to help them settle down. The whole wig is styled with just water and my fingers. No heat tools necessary. Thicker wefts require more trimming, and some of the ones on top were a lot longer than they needed to be, so they lost a lot of length during this step. I put a scrap of fabric beneath the doll's head to make sure I didn't damage his face up. A little more water, and the back is starting to look pretty good. There are places where you can see through to the wefts and wig cap, but that's mostly because the hair is wet. It will fluff up as it dries, and cover better after it's been combed. Now it's time to do the front. As I trim each section, I wet it with water and arrange it the way I want it to lay when the wig is done. It'll have to be adjusted a little more once it's on the doll, but getting it moving in the right direction now helps. I smooth out some of the longer pieces at the front that will hang around his face, and then put a little more water on the back so I can comb it out. It will need a few more combings before everything blends together ideally, but you can see the rough edges start to disappear as I comb. If there are any areas that need more thorough blending, this step will make them obvious. I can always trim a little more later. And here's how he looks when I'm done. Time to put his eyes back in and put him back together. Once the wig is dry, it looks like most of the problem areas will just need more styling to look the way I want. From the front, I'm pretty happy with the look. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.